Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy, Lord God. And we ask that we can feel your presence today, Lord, as we lift your name up. Lord, we ask that you would touch us and that we believe changed by the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
We worship you this morning. Hallelujah. You're worthy of our praise, Lord God. You're worthy of our worship. Hallelujah. God, help us to get our minds focused on you, Jesus. Our hearts set on things above, not on things of the earth. Let us see how awesome, how majestic, how holy you are this morning, Lord God. Lord, that you desire to reveal yourself to us, Lord God, if we'll look with eyes of faith, Lord God, with eyes of worship and adoration, sincerity in our worship, Lord God, you're going to move among us, Lord God. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We give you praise, God. We give you honor, Lord, this morning. You're deserving of the best of our praise and worship, Lord. Lord, that we would pour out our hearts to you this morning. Hallelujah. We worship you, God. We give you glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Aren't you thankful this morning? We're going to sing that song again, Heart of Worship. I don't know if you've heard the history of that song, why Matt Redman wrote that song. But I think it's appropriate if you have a chance to go and read the history of how that song came to be. It'll minister to you. Aren't you thankful it's not just the right combination of three fast songs and two slow songs? You don't even have to sing on key, aren't you thankful? <laughs> you don't have to have the perfect blend of melody and harmony to worship God. All He wants is one thing this morning, and that's your heart. Amen? He wants your heart this morning. And I want us to sing that song again. And would you just give Him your heart? If we'll give God our heart this morning, if we'll fully yield to Him, if we'll fully submit to what He's wanting to do by His Holy Spirit, there's no telling what God will do this morning. Amen? You'll leave different. You'll leave changed. You'll leave empowered because of you just giving God your heart. So let's sing that chorus one more time that Reverend James feels led. And let's just simply say, God, I love you this morning. God, I worship you this morning. You deserve the best of my praise and worship. I don't want to just give you a token gesture this morning. God, I want to worship you for who you are. I want to worship you for all that you've done. Amen. Can we do that one more time this morning? Hallelujah.
He's going to bring the provision that we need today. So as James leads us in this song, would you let faith arise in your hearts regarding your need, regarding these needs that we've mentioned? And then we're going to thank God that He is the answer, Lord, for, for every one of these needs. And then we're going to pray and lift these needs to the Lord in prayer. But let's worship the Lord for a moment first. testimony. 
God, of this, this vision being corrected for your glory and for your fame today. Lord, we pray for Lord Pam Rodriguez today. as She had surgery this week for her heart. Pray that she'll, you'll give her a quick recovery, a speedy recovery, that you'll give her a peace that passes understanding. Minister to her today for Pastor Wanger in, in Ottawa, Illinois. God, touch him today. The many health issues that he's struggled with in recent weeks. Lord, we pray for a strengthening, for a healing touch for your glory. Lord, we pray for Candy this morning, Lord, going through issues with her heart, with her blood pressure, with her ankles. God, I pray that you'll touch each one of these needs, Lord God. Give her strength, give her grace today. God, let uh, your perfect love cast out fear. Lord, as she goes through this difficult time, let her know that you're as close as a mention of your name. I pray for my sister Dawn, Lord God, that you'll open up the right job opportunity for her. Thank you that you are Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides. Lord, we just pray you bless her today. For each need that's represented in this room this morning by an uplifted hand, God, you know it. You're able to meet it. God, I pray that we'll have confidence today. God, that the answer is on the way. God, that you make a way, God, even at times when there seems to be no way. God, it's not up to our strength. God, it's in your hands. And your strength is perfect, even in our weakness. So we thank you for that today. Minister to those who are watching online. God, bring healing, bring wisdom, bring peace. Bring, God, restoration to broken relationships, Lord God. God, accomplish what you desire to each individual, each family. Lord, we just thank you this morning that the answers are on the way. We thank you that your finished work provides all that we need this morning. We put our trust in that this morning. And we just give you thanks for all that you're going to do in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Believe God. Amen. Just believe God. If you believe, the Bible says Jesus told the crowd, just believe if you believe all things are possible for those who will believe. We're blessed this morning to have our middle daughter back home from Bible College, and God's been doing some incredible things in her life over the last uh, several weeks, and uh, it's hard to believe the first semester is almost already over, and uh, we're just so thankful for what God is doing in our children, all three of our children. It's just a blessing to sit back and watch them in worship, in praise, and, and uh, to fulfill God's plan for their lives. We're uh, blessed to see what God's doing in Zoe's life, the preparation that's taking place. It's some hard work. And uh, God's doing some good things, but she's going to minister to us in song this morning, and then she's going to um, share the word with us as well. So let's give her a welcome this morning as she comes to minister. Hallelujah. Well, it's good to be here with y'all this morning. Um, I just wanted to encourage y'all with something today. If you ever feel like you've been going through a valley of dry bones, um, I just want to encourage y'all to worship God anyways because it's when we come to God and we worship Him that no matter what, in whatever we're going through, it's then that we begin to hear the dead things coming back to life. We begin to hear the rattling of those dry bones and our valley can become a valley of life and living for God.
as a modern church, we have lost sight of what true worship is, and we need to get back to that place of true, honest, incorrupt adoration of God. And so today we're going to be looking at five verses about bringing God the proper sacrifice in our worship. Would you pray with me today? Lord, we just thank you today. Lord, we thank you that we can come into your presence and we can learn about you, Lord. We thank you that we have the, um, the privilege to come and to worship you, Lord. Uh, we thank you, Lord, that you have blessed us with the ability to have such an amazing worship team, Lord. But we just, we just thank you, Lord, more than anything, that we can come and worship you freely. Um, and we just ask that you would be with us in this message day, Lord, guide my words, guide my mouth, Lord, and guide our hearts, Lord God. Let us hear what you are having us to learn today, and just help the service to go well. In Jesus' name, amen. Alright, so the first verse we're going to be looking at is Malachi 1, and we're going to be looking at verse 6. A son honors his father, and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is my honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear, says the Lord of hosts unto you, O priests who despise my name? And you say, wherein have we despised your name? When someone does something nice for us, do we thank them? When someone puts their life on hold to help us, we often express great gratitude and even an exchange of our own time. But when God does something for us, do we thank him? Do we take time out of our day, out of our busy schedules, and do we sit down and we say, Wow, God, you have been so good to me. I just want to thank you for all that you've done for us. Like, you've delivered us from addictions. You've healed us. You, you've spent time. You've taken time to dwell with us when we seek you. So I just want to take some time, and I just want to thank you right now. When do we do that? God sent his one and only son to die for our sin. God carries us through our battles. He calls our hearts even when we run from him. Where is the gratitude? Why are we not giving him an exchange? The uh, expositor's note said, they showed him no respect, gratitude, or acceptable service. Are we showing God acceptable service? Are we saying, are we willing to come to church and to set aside whatever else we had going on during the week, even not during church, just on a daily basis. Are we willing to set aside everything else and to just sit down and thank God and uh, serve Him and for all that He's done for us? Uh, we tend to say that we would never forget to thank God. How many of you, if someone asked you, hey, did you forget to thank God today, would you say, yeah, I did? You wouldn't want to say that because... As a Christian, that's embarrassing, but we tend to say that we wouldn't ever forget to thank God. When the preacher is preaching, we nod our heads and we say amen, and we might completely agree with our whole heart. But then why, when we are going through the motions during the week, is there not a continual thanks on our lips? When something goes wrong, when we burn our food, when that person at work is on our nerves today, we tend to forget that even though all these things are going wrong, God is still good to us. It doesn't matter if this life is terrible. God's always been good, and he's still going to be good regardless of our circumstances. So instead of just going through the motions and letting our worship get lost in the day-to-day -day life and forgetting to thank God, we need to have a continual thanks on our lips. God charged the priests with failing to honor him to the point of showing contempt for his name and failing to be good spiritual examples for the people. That is another thing. We as the church, we are supposed to go out and we are supposed to set an example to an unsaved world that might be looking for hope, that might be going through the motions and wondering where their breakthrough's coming. And then we're the Christian over there. We're supposed to be setting an example and we're grumbling and complaining because the fast food worker's taking too long to make our sandwich, because the air conditioner isn't set where we want it. It's, so we're supposed to be good examples. We're supposed to be praising God regardless of the circumstances, and we're not setting that example. We need to be setting that spiritual example for the people. The church has become one of the biggest examples of improper worship. 
We have taken the purpose of worship and turned it into a talent show. We care more about how we sound, how we look, and how we feel than if the spirit is actually moving in a service. But it's, it's, we have made it all about us and not about worshiping him. I've been, I've seen many different worship teams, many different groups of people come together to lead uh, the congregation in worship. And I've seen attitudes of true, sincere worship and people who want to come not to be seen, but to lift God up. But on the other hand, I've seen worship teams that they don't become so distracted by, oh, how can we make this song sound so good like they did when they originally recorded it? Or how can we make these, how can we be the best worship team there can possibly be, sound-wise and look-wise? But it's when we get so focused on the outward and what we can do that we forget true worship is not about us. It's about worshiping God. And like that song James sang this morning, we need to get back to the heart of worship. Uh, when the music when the music fades, that means if we didn't have such a great worship team, if we didn't have a worship team at all, would we still come in here and would we still worship the Lord? I've been to a church where they don't have a worship team. They do worship from a video, and they they are some of the most sincere worshipers I have ever seen. They come in there with their whole heart and they worship. And even if the song it feels like the song ended too early, they still worship going into the next song. So we need to come in here and we need to be ready to worship God regardless of what the worship team sounds like, regardless of how we feel that day. God is still worthy of our worship regardless of us. It's all about God and not about us. We need to get back to a place of no matter what songs we sing, no matter how good we sound, worship is about honoring God. We need to be setting an example to those around us of thanking God without interference. Thanking God in spite of the circumstances. That is true worship. Alrighty, and then the next verse we're going to look at is Malachi chapter 1 and verse 10. Who is there even among you who would shut the doors for naught? Neither do you kindle fire on my altar for naught. I have no pleasure in you, says the Lord of hosts. Neither will I accept an offering at your hand. Are we proving our adoration of God? Are we giving Him all the glory and honor due His name? Is our worship all about Him? If it's not, then why are we worshiping? Why even bother to enter into worship, the heartfelt adoration of God, if we are not going to do that? In the notes it says, the idea of this verse is that it would be morally better to close the temple than to continue such hypocritical services. The priests in this verse were not willing to do the work that God had told them they were supposed to do in the temple because they didn't feel that they were receiving adequate payment for that. They felt like they should receive more money, uh, more a, a better portion of the sacrifice than what they were receiving for doing their job. Corrupt practices are genuine fruit and product of corrupt principles. In this verse is we find men dealing falsely with one another, and it is because they think falsely of their God. They were not they were not necessarily doing God's work because they felt it in their heart that it was their responsibility. They were doing it because it got them something. Would we continue to worship the Lord even when the circumstances don't go our way? Would we continue to worship the Lord when we don't see the breakthrough we want? Or would we allow life's problems to corrupt our worship? Would we, if we, uh, as a, if you worked in a church and you get paid to be on a worship team, if you weren't getting paid to do that, would you still come and would you still lead the people in worship? As a pastor, if you weren't receiving a paycheck from the church that you minister at, would you still come and minister the word? Regardless of what kind of payment you receive, the Lord has called each and every one of us to do a work. And it is required of us that regardless of what compensation or what went on during our week that wants to prevent us from coming and ministering the word, we have a responsibility to come and to do that call because we have accepted that call. And the priests in this verse, they weren't willing to, their sacrifices had become corrupt because 
their hearts have become, oh, I'm not getting paid for this, there's no point in it. That is a very dangerous mindset. They would not even shut the temple doors or kindle the altar fire unless they were paid for it. In other words, they kept minute accounts of all the services that they rendered, expecting pay, but paid little attention to that which belonged to God. If you come in here to worship God and you're thinking about, oh man, I'm going to get so blessed for this. I'm going to get so much out of like coming to church because I came to church, so I'm, I'm bound to get something out of it. I should get something out of it. Which, yes, you should come to church expecting to receive, but if that's all you're thinking about while they're worshiping is, oh, how blessed I'm going to be, instead of actually coming to worship God, then that's not true worship. We ought to be very careful not to make worship about us. We should not worship because it earns us something with God, which it doesn't. We should not worship only when things are going wrong and we need something. We should worship God in every circumstance because He is worthy. Regardless of where we are at or how things are going, God has always been faithful, is faithful, and will be faithful. We worship God not necessarily because of what He does or what He can do for us in our current situation, but we worship Him because of who He is. He is God. He is the Lord Most High. He is Almighty. He's our healer. He's our Savior. He's our deliverer. And He does things for us, but we worship Him because He is these things, not because of what we get out of who He is. All right, and then the next verse we're going to look at is, uh, is uh, verse, two, uh, verse 12. But you have profaned it, in that you say, The table of the Lord is polluted, and the fruit thereof, even his meat, is, even his meat is contemptible. The priests did not care about the Lord being insulted, only that they didn't get what they wanted. When they offered up these corrupt sacrifices, they knew they were corrupt because they weren't getting their, prop, their proper portion out of it at the end of the day after the, all the sacrifices were made and the portion of their family to eat. They weren't getting what they wanted or what they expected, so they knew they knew this sacrifice was corrupt and an insult to the Lord, but they only cared that they didn't get what they were wanting. Of most of the sacrifices offered, the priests were to receive a portion of it for their own use, which provided a part of their living and sustenance for them and their families. However, these sacrifices were so contemptible that there was nothing for the priests. The irony is that the priests were concerned about themselves, but had no regard for God whatsoever. When we come to church and the worship service doesn't go well, and we're like, man, that was terrible. I wish, I, I wish they had done better so I could have gotten something out of it. How do you think God feels? We didn't come in here and we didn't give him his all, our all, and the worship service went bad because we weren't giving him our whole heart. So if we are sitting there thinking, man, I wish I had received something, I wish the worship team had done a better job, just think about God didn't receive the proper worship either. And it's not necessarily the worship team's fault. It's what kind of attitude did we come in with? So when a worship service does not go well, how do we react? Do we get upset because we didn't get the feeling we wanted? Because we didn't feel good or feel blessed? Or are we concerned with making sure that the next time that we come to worship, we come with the right heart? That we come ready to give the Lord the proper sacrifice? It's then that worship will be good. And not necessarily because we're going to receive something from it, but because it is a true heartfelt adoration given to God. And then in verse 14... It says, But cursed be the deceiver, which has in his flock a male, and vows and sacrifices unto the Lord a corrupt thing. For I am a great king, says the Lord of hosts, and my name is dreadful among the heathen. A great king deserves a great sacrifice. And my name is dreadful among the heathen refers to the tremendous miracles God has performed, of which the heathen were aware, and yet, even though they held him in high regard, his own people showed him nothing but disrespect. You can go out there and you can ask uh, non-believers. I know a couple of people from my workplace or other people from other places. 
you can ask them, does God do good things for people? And I guarantee you they would say yes because they've seen it in my life or in the life of a Christian around them. Or they've had a Christian friend that has prayed for them even though they don't believe in God themselves. But they've had a Christian friend that prays for them and they see an answer to that prayer. So the heathen, even the heathen acknowledge that God is a good God and that he answers the prayers of his people. But there's sometimes that we as the Christians don't even recognize that, that we fail to give God recognition for what he's done. Even the heathen see what God is doing for his people. They see a Christian who they know is going through it, but is somehow still making it and stand in awe. Even the heathen stand in awe of God. So why are there so many Christians grumbling and complaining? Why are there so many Christians doubting God? Why do we show God such disrespect? If the rocks can cry out, so can we. Luke 19 verse 40 says, And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if they, these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. If we don't worship God, he's still going to be worthy of worship. He's still going to receive honor from his creation because he is still worthy regardless of if we give it to him or not. But if we have the breath, we ought to worship God. If we have the strength, we ought to worship God. If we have the ability to get to church on a Sunday, on a Wednesday, we ought to get to church on a Sunday and a Wednesday. If we have... If we, can, if we have the ability to make time in our day, which I, t I can tell you, you have, at some point in your day, you have ability to make time for God. If you can make time for God in your day, you should be spending time with Him during the day. Let's not let our worship fall to the rocks. Let's not let those unsaved people around us be the only people recognizing what God is doing. Let us also come and let us cry out to God because he is worthy of worship. The last verse I want to look at this morning is Isaiah 1 verse 11. And it says... To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, says the Lord? I am full of the burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts, and I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of he goats. The very worship which God himself has, had commanded was debased by them and had become an abomination in his sight because they looked to the ceremony instead of what the ceremony represented namely Jesus Christ and Him crucified. We are a society in the modern church where worship is very, it looks very good to us. It's something that's appealing. If a church has a good worship team, then it's a good church. Uh, we have become so consumed, so like bent towards, ah yes, we gotta have a good worship service or there's no point in going to church. Um, but we have become so consumed with having worship that we forget what worship is. We don't come and worship because God is worthy of our adoration. We come and worship because it's something that we're supposed to do. Has our very worship become an abomination to God? Have we become so enveloped with having a good worship service that it has become the, full, the sole focus of our faith? All of this emphasizes the fact that religious rituals of which may abound in the modern church were worthless unless accompanied by a relationship with the Lord that will produce an upright life. Unless our worship is centered around Jesus Christ and what he has done for us, in that alone, then our worship is worthless. It is an abomination. There's no point in us coming to worship if we're not going to worship God with a true heart, with a, tr a spirit of, I'm going to worship you because you deserve it. Not because it looks good, not because I sound good. We've got to worship God because he's worthy, or else our worship is nothing. Good worship does not create proper faith. Proper relationship with the Lord 
It's only when we have it is only when we have proper relationship with the Lord that we can have good worship. And that good worship will be an honest adoration of God without any distractions. It won't be about us and it won't be it won't just be Holy Ghost goosebumps. It won't just be about God blessing us. It's going to be all about him. And I just want to close with this final statement. What a great and glorious God we serve. That should be our heart every time we come and worship the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. God's dealing with our heart about worship this morning. Amen. Are we listening to what He's saying to us today? We ought to be considering what Malachi, these verses in Malachi say. These uh, Jewish people, they were covenant people. They knew how to worship God. They knew the method, right? They knew what the law said. They knew what God's word taught them. And really, in that sense, there's no difference between them and us because we're covenant people today. Amen. We're under the new covenant. But if you've grown up in church or you've been in church any number of weeks or months or years, you get to the point where you think you know some things, right? And we do. We know some things. But sometimes worship is just about letting go of the control that we think we have, the knowledge that we think we have, and say, God, I just want to know you more. Amen. I just want to worship you. I want to throw aside tradition. I want to throw aside the letter of the law. God, I just want I just want to praise you. I just want to adore you for who you are. Amen. And I think that's what God is challenging us with today in this message and a good word um, that Zoe brought us this morning. I'm going to ask James if he would to come back to the piano. And can we just respond to God's word today? Every time God speaks, he wants an answer. And he's asking you, he's asking me about our worship today. Is our worship where it needs to be? And what an appropriate Time for us to consider that at Thanksgiving week. Are we giving God the thanks? Are we giving Him the gratitude that we ought to in uh, every every part of our life? And yes, Sunday and Wednesday it's easy, right? When other brothers and sisters are coming into the house of God and we've got musicians, we've got music, and thank God for all of that. But what about Tuesday? What about Thursday? When we're going through difficult times and we're all by ourselves, we don't know if anybody else around us is a Christian. Can we still... Have that song, that joy in our heart, and say, God, I, I'm, I'm feeling squeezed, I'm feeling pressed, I'm feeling uh, some pressure in the situation, but God, I'm going to praise you anyway. Amen. I'm going to praise you, I'm going to worship you, and know that I may not know how this is all going to work out, but God, I know you're going to work it out. Amen. Can we stand this morning? James is just going to lead us in a song, this time of decision, this time of altar. I think every time God speaks, we should have an altar of prayer. We should say, God, there's some things in my life that need to die. And there's some things that you want to bring new life to within me. And I, I want to challenge you this morning, as James leads us in this song, can we find an altar of prayer? I believe this message was mostly for Christians today. And Christians, we need to do some self-analysis. We're good at analyzing everybody else. Amen. Say how their worship needs to change. No, God's asking about your worship today. Let's do some self-analysis and say, God, I want to grow. I want to be a, a worshiper who worships you in spirit and in truth. I don't want to offer you profane, vile, corrupt worship that has selfishness or self-indulgence inside of it. God, I want to offer you pure worship. And if you need to ask God for forgiveness, either for not spending the time that you ought to in worship, or because your worship has just been routine, it's just been regimented, it's just been dead, dry religion. Ask God to forgive you if you're a believer today. I believe also if you're not a Christian today, if you've not given your life to God and you've tuned, tuned into this message, this service today, it's not by accident. God wants a covenant love relationship with every human being. Have to do is say yes to Jesus. First John 1 9 says, If we confess our sins, we say what God is saying about them, He is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And you can know what it means to worship God. You can know what it means to have a daily personal relationship with Him, to have your sins forgiven, to have a hope of heaven just by praying a prayer in your own words and inviting.
inviting Jesus to come into your life. So whatever your situation is this morning, if you need Jesus to be your Savior, you need Him to forgive your sins. As we go to the Lord in this time of altar prayer, you just find an altar of prayer and say, God, I need you. My life is a mess. I repent of my sins. I want you as my Savior. I want you as my Lord. God will begin a covenant of love relationship with you. Or if you're a believer this morning, renew that relationship with God. Amen. Say, so God, I want to be a true worshiper. I want the, the power of the Holy Spirit to help me grow in my worship. Amen. And then we're going to close together in a time of prayer. But let's find an altar prayer uh, for a few moments. Let God submit this into our hearts this morning.
Gospels, Jesus looked at the religious leaders at that time. He says, with your lips, worship me. You give me lip service, but your heart is far from me. You're good at teaching the vain traditions of men, but you're, you can't give the same attention, the same devotion to true heartfelt worship. God's looking for true heartfelt worshipers. Amen. This morning, the title of this message is Approaching God with a Proper Sacrifice. Amen. What's that sacrifice? It's the sacrifices of God, the book of Isaiah says, are a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Amen. When we come to Jesus the same way we got saved, broken, humble, saying, God, I've got to have you. I've made a mess of things and I need you to fix it. If we come to God with that kind of heart, He responds. Amen. Those are the sacrifices and worship that God responds to this morning. Would you join hands with that person next to you? Let's pray for each other this morning. Before we dismiss, let's pray that God would help us as a church to be the worshipers that He wants us to be. Amen. Every part of our being would be in worship to God. Amen. Let's believe God for that this morning. Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord God, for your presence and the service this morning in worship and the special the preaching of the word. God, I pray that we'll hear what the Holy Spirit is speaking to us this morning. God, that we would become better worshipers, Lord God. That we would become the worshipers that you want us to be, Lord God. Not just offering you token gestures. Not just going through religious wheels in motion when we worship you. But God, actually pouring out our hearts to you, Lord God. We want to give you more than just lip service, God. We want to give you our lives. Lord, I just pray that you'll help each one of us to mature and to grow in response to your word today in our worship. God, let this church be a church that understands worship, biblical worship, spirit-filled, spirit-empowered worship. When we come together corporately, God, I pray that we'll lay aside our inhibitions. God, that we'll lay aside the distractions that the enemy tries to cloud our minds with. God, that when we come together as a body of Christ, that we'll worship you with abandon. God, that we'll worship you with passion. God, with the power of the Holy Spirit helping us. God, let us be a church. God, that worships you, that praises you, Lord God. Lord, together, Lord, that we link arms with our brothers and sisters in Christ. And we go through the valleys together. We go through the mountaintops together. God, in praise and worship. Lord, we just thank you for what you're doing in this place. Lord, I pray that you'll help us to put your word into practice this week. Lord, let it be bread for the eater. Let it be seed for the sower. God, there may be someone who comes across our path who needs to hear what you are speaking to us in this message today. Help us to be bold to share that with them, to point them to the scriptures so that they may understand the covenant love relationship they can have with you as well. God, bless us as we leave this place this morning. Give us a great Thanksgiving week. Help us to remember all the things that we have to be thankful for. God, to count our blessings. Lord, bless our time with family and friends this week. God, our relationships are so much more valuable than any other possessions that we have. And may we treasure, may we value those relationships this week. Enjoy our time with friends and family. Give us a great week in your presence, we pray. We thank you for it. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you.